Hello everyone, we're Team Hale, and we're very thankful for Broad E to have us today um, to organize this workshop for everyone here today. Um, so the title of our workshop today is Hale as a Scalable Genomic Analysis Tool. Um, the three presenters for today will include me, Kumar, John, and Patrick, who are sitting right there. Uh, we have three separate practicals that I'll go through our outline for today. So, well, right now, we're gonna go through our introduction to Hale. Um, and then I'll lead you through practical one in how would you import your data, uh, run some quick QC on your data, and finally some question and answer session where during which um, if we went over, that would be great, that just gives us a little leg room. On top of that, if you need to go stretch your legs for like a couple of minutes or go get some coffee from the coffee truck or from the machine out there, please go ahead. Um, and then subsequently, we'll go through practical two um, on GWAS and rare variant analysis. Patrick will take over on that. Um, a little bit of Q&A, a little bit of stretching time. Subsequently, we'll finish off with a little more interactive movement uh, with looking at PCA and delineating ancestries. Um, that's a pretty fun practical that we have. Hopefully, you enjoyed as much as we did in developing it. Um, finally, some question and answer, and a little bit of wrap up and also giving you some information on what would you look for upon completing this workshop. So the one thing that we also note is that this workshop is only a couple of hours, uh, well, about three hours, and like we don't expect you to be excellent users at Hale. We do only expect you to know what Hale is, how to use Hale. Essentially, throughout the workshop today, we'll be running through um, the entire tutorial that we have on our website. So a quick spiel on who the Hale team is. Uh, we're technically under Ben Neal's lab, where our team leader is Cotton, um, and our mini managers, while Cotton is not around, are Tim Paterba and Dan King. Uh, the rest of us are engineers, except Whitney Wade, who is our operations person, and myself, who is primarily a geneticist, who's thrown into the group for software support and outreach, which is this part of our outreach efforts. So before we get started, I love running surveys. And so this is the interactive part of our workshop today. And I know most of the time when you come to workshops, you're kind of like told, don't switch on your phones, don't switch on your computers. So what I would love to ask you right now is to grab a hold of your phone, grab a hold of your computer, and log into our poll everywhere right now, and let us know what tool that you currently use for your genomic data. How do you analyze your genomic data? Why? Because one, it also gets us in tune with what you are accustomed to. If you're also a Hale user, please send Hale users there. Um, this is just, this is not a word cloud, it's just kind of like a spiel of like, wow, I see Plink is basically the only one so far, um, which is actually pretty comforting for us because we do know many people are comfortable using Plink. So I'll give you a couple more moments to kind of like VCF tools, also a really cool tool. I remember using that. Um, hail, yay, whoever said hail. Uh, Plink, perfect. Plink is winning right now by two. Um, but again, like it also sets us towards how we run this workshop. On top of that, this slide will also be used by our development team to kind of like get through what our priorities are towards developing more features in Hale. So we have GATK, we have Hale again. This is really cool. We have 23 results so far. There's about 34 people in this room. I also like that we have four hail so far and Bolt LLM and Sage, which are two really cool tools to run regressions. Uh, bed tools are Avi. <laughs> Most of us are geneticists here in GATK. Perfect. And Sage, um, yeah, so Sage is not incorporated in hail yet, but we are trying to come up with more tools to incorporate Sage into it. So be on the lookout for that. VCF tools, GATK, perfect, and bed tools. Okay, so um, I guess to summarize in some things, when we think about what we use for Hale, a lot of the times when I talk to users, most people are asking me, what do I do when, um, okay, great, thank you for letting me know what the number was, I appreciate that. So um, when I talk to users, most users ask me, what do I do after FASTQ files, after my CRAM files, my BAM files, can I straight away put it into Hale? 
Quite the contrary, no. So hail is used, and what I was talking to the GATK team is, you would run GATK to run through all your call sets to get your VCF files together and then import your VCF files into hail. We also support uh, other file formats such as Splink formats and BGen formats, and I will go through in a bit. So it's not to replace GATK, but rather to complement GATK downstream of it so that upon getting your VCF files, your variant call files, you would then be able to run your analysis. So moving on, uh, this is our next slide. When you think of Hale, because you all signed up for Hale today for the workshop, what is the one word that comes to mind when you think of Hale? And I would try not to stimulate you with any words after this because I did this at our lab meeting and I was really surprised at some of the words that we came with. Kumar, <laughs> yay. I have a feeling I know exactly who said that. Cotton, steep. Okay, so again, this is updated in real time. It's a word, word cloud, PCA, umbrella. Now I'm just thinking of Rihanna. Spark, fast parallelization. I love that that came out um, because that is something that we work and strive towards. GWAS is still winning and parallelization is still winning. This is great, Tim. I guess scalable genomics is working to our users right now or our future users because I know some of you are using Plink, cloud, cloud tools. I love this. Okay, so I love that it comes to mind, the major words are GWAS, scalable, and parallelization, which is something that we really strive towards, especially scalable and parallelization. Because one of the main things that comes to mind when, it thinks, when we think about hail is those words. So just to, re, just to, to summarize a little bit or, or to extend of what your word cloud generated, this word cloud here is of all the 50, 48 abstracts that have cited us so far in their publications. And one of the major things that was cited was variations, genetics, and genes. So considering it was developed at the Broad Institute, one of our main user base are geneticists. So these are all words that appeared more than four times in our abstracts. Um, they would not be uh, uh, as translatable to your word cloud because your word cloud was whatever came to your mind immediately. And this was after thinking about it for five days and coming up with one line in an abstract. I know, we've all been there. So what is Hale? The lead analyst for Nomad, um, which I'm sure some of us have used Nomad before, Conrad Karzewski, um, on a scale of one to zero, one of zero to D plier, which is a tool in R that allows you to manipulate data tables, uh, Hale 0.2 interface scores an eight over 10 for general purpose data analysis. Knowing Conrad, that's actually a pretty high score. Um, and so Hale, it works really well for big data. As most of us have answered, uh, VCF tools and Plink work really well for your analytics. Hale hopes to kind of like take, take that, churn it differently into larger data sets. A really good example that I personally love thinking about when I started using Hale, so I didn't start working on Hale when Hale started. I was a Hale user to begin with. I had about 5,000 genomes to churn through. All 5,000 genomes, if we were to run it on Plink, it would destroy our bro cluster. Secondly, if I were to parallelize it, it would parallelize slowly. And guess what? My QC was run after you know, optimizing my parameters for 10 minutes. My VEP annotation ran within one hour for all 4,000 genomes. And keeping in mind, I use about 80 uh, full nodes uh, using Google Cloud. So that's, a, to my knowledge and my personal experience, great performance. Because when I ran genetics a few years ago, it would take forever. So now with Hale, we hope to run it faster. So one thing we do really strive upon is that Hale is a scalable genomics tool. It can be run on a laptop, but its power really shows when it's run on cloud, on a cloud-based tool such as AWS or Google Cloud Platform. You could, in concept, scale up to a million genomes, which is exactly what Conrad on the Nomad team is striving towards. The other thing that we also want to clarify is that Hale 
despite it being developed by software developers, is meant for geneticists to use as easy as possible. So it's simple, it's easy to use, and it's very domain primitive. But at the same time, I'd also like to remind you that Hale is not a go-to tool for everything yet. So if you do need a tool that you've been craving to use, like if you need Sage, you need Sage within Hale, please let us know. Because if you let us know, it will give you less time to implement certain tools and more time for you to think about your scientific curiosities. So reach out to us on discuss.hale.is. We really can't read your mind. We're not Jean Grey or Professor X. So it's also a reusable infrastructure where the rapid development of Apache Spark and it makes it extremely open source where you can view the code and edit it yourself if you need to, to apply it onto your own data set. So it's very user friendly. It allows you to be as excited about science as you can. And on top of that, if you're excited about programming, that is great for you, more power to you. So learn today more about Hale and also visit our website whenever you can. We're going through an overhaul of our website in the next few weeks um, on hale.is. We're also coming up with a blog in a few days. So why would you, as the user, need to use Hale? One of the things that um, as geneticists we get frustrated with, especially if you trained in a biology-centric lab, is that every time you work with computational tools, you spend so much time in this deathly region of implementing one tool. And then realizing a comma or a period was the only thing that was in your way for over a week. And then when you run it, it takes an even longer time, and then you just don't have as much time for your scientific reasoning. Because let's face it, as geneticists, we're here to talk about the science, to learn about the disease, to help our patients, to help our questions move forward. So for Hale, we hope to transform this so that you don't have to spend such a long time trying to do the implementation, trying to run your tool, and spending more time reasoning out your science. So when we think about Hale, there are two major areas that I'd love to describe before we start in our first practical, where first thing is, how would you sling your data and what kind of data can you read in? You can be in VCS, TSVs, uh, BGen, Plink files, JSON, Gen files, BED files, GTS. Essentially, any files that has your genetic data in. You could then filter, group, and aggregate your data amongst um, your different um, mean averages that you're looking for. Your metrics that you use for your genetic analysis, such as in computing your mean deep, uh, death per variant, um, followed by your um, count of TSVs, your transition transversions per samples, annotating your genes, annotating your genomic data, because when we have our genomic data, sometimes we're just not clear about what are we running. So um, knowing what your genes are. You also have a reference genome available for you, and coming soon is our annotation database. We did a really good job in our perspective in our Hale 0.1, which we're hoping to translate into Hale 0.2, where all you have to do is kind of like go into our website, click on different databases that you want annotation for, copy a script from our interactive website, and put it into your code. Visualization, one of the biggest things that we know in genetics, because we know we all don't like reading as much, we like looking at pretty pictures. So our pretty pictures in Hale is a Python-based library, uses a lot of Python packages in order to allow you to visualize. On top of that, you could also export your data so that if some of us who love using R, because obvi, we do, um, we could just export it and run it in R. So in terms of our toolbox for analytics, uh, we do have uh, statistical methods for genetics, such as PCA Relate, which are available for you on the get-go as packages or functions within our Hale library. Linear algebra is coming up, uh, and it's currently in our early stages of development. Um, but believe me, it will be up there for you in no time. So when we think of what we as geneticists work with, we start off usually with VCF files, our variant call files. So when we think about our variant call files, we have our variant call files, which are subjected to variants by row, and our sample IDs and matrices by our columns. Our genotypes are our entries here. 
Hail allows you to export this into a slightly different format called a matrix table. And a matrix table, why is this important? Is because it allows you to slice and dice your data, therefore allowing parallelization to be a lot faster and more efficient. So when we think about our rows, our rows are constant for every column right there, and our columns up here are constant for every row. This would make your two-dimensional data set that allows you to have your entries that you would call on really easily by intersect of your columns and rows. To give you an example, upon importing your BCF file, this was a screenshot taken by from our tutorial where our row fields would be your locus, alleles, RSID, quality filters, and info, and our entry fields would be our GT, uh, which is our genotype quality, sorry, our genotype, uh, elite depth, depth well, genotype quality, and PL or FRED like scores, and your column keys would be your sample IDs, and your row keys would be locus and alleles. So a slightly different way of looking at your tables, and the reason and the rationale behind having your keys and entries is again to allow scalable and parallelized genetics. That can be exported from your transcript files, from your trio files. If you'd love to talk to us about the file sets that you're using, please feel free to reach out to us on discuss.hail, or we also have real-time Zulip chat rooms for you to reach out to us. So subsequently, to also give you a clarification, there is a slightly different um, table or a slightly different data type, which is your rows here for your table, which is only categorized by your rows. This can be things like annotation databases, can be also sample IDs that you would then merge onto your matrix table here. So while we are running the workshop, if you do have any questions, use the same number that you had to begin with in order to access us, like, you know, because we know sometimes we're a little shy to ask questions. So if you do have anything at any point, please feel free to text us. We'll run through this.